YouTubers and welcome to Mud Max Metal Detecting. It's nearly Christmas. Time to go out for a dig. Uh, I haven't done any Christmas shopping yet, but I'm out here detecting instead. <laughs> right, it absolutely chucked it down with rain last night, so it's going to be sticking to the boots. It's going to be sticking to the shovel. It's just going to be sticking, really. It's going to be a blooming nightmare, but a fun nightmare because we're detecting. And I've got the new toy out. <laughs> It's the Golden Mask one, so we're going to have a whiz-bang with that today, see how she gets on in the field. Damon is with me, Damon's using my dais, and together we are going to detect in the mud and the slurry and see what comes out. So, let's get stuck in. Okay, now you hear that? That actually sounds like there's quite a lot of good stuff popping through. But if you look at the graph, it's almost completely in the iron. That's big iron on these machines, or misshaped iron. Well, it's overwhelming, the machine, but that graph tells you. Look at all those spikes going everywhere. Well, let's dig it out and have a look, but I think this is going to be something horrible. Despite that good tone. Well, apologies, I wanted to live dig that for you. Um, but it wasn't in there, it was back here and it took me ages. In fact, it was just there. Such a big signal that I'd come off of it. Um, got it a little bit wrong but it's exactly what I said those spikes everywhere um, the high tone is just the sheer size of it but yeah the spikes told me I knew that was going to be a dirty filthy horrible piece of rusty iron um, because of the way the graph was behaving so very very good yes spot on okay we're in it's taken a while this is a quiet field but there we go. Sorry about the glare, but settling on the 70s. Let's get out and have a look. Right, we've had a signal in the loose earth. So she's gone from there to there. But where from there to there? Ah, hang on. Oh, I can see you. Yep, a very small, good conductor. Little, I think that's lead. Doesn't feel very heavy, but it's got that leadish look. It's a little washer anyway, a very old washer, and a very small target, um, but a nice clean signal. So okay, onwards and upwards. Right to the side, and there you are. Oh, it's our old friend, the Moo Tube. No wonder it was a lovely clean signal. Those blooming moo tubes, they always are beautiful clean signals. Yuck! Scraping around in the mud for a cow tube. Bah! Okay, this was a deeper one, and uh, it's sort of, yeah, sort of kind of getting on for the length of the probe. I don't know, some of the earth's fallen back in. It's a bit hard to say, but it was about two or three space balls out, and I think I can see it. I was going to pinpoint it, but I don't think I need to, because I just came off the back, yeah. Now that's, uh, that's a deeper target, it's nothing nice, but it is a high conductive metal. And that started out in the 50s, and then when I started getting some out, it went up to the 60s, and then when I actually had it out and it was close to the coil, it became a, almost a solid 40. So yeah, depth playing around with the numbers, but either way, it was a nice clean signal, the tone was good, and it was a dig all day, and it was a bit deeper. So a bit of scrap, but there you go. Ugh. Oh, what are you? Oh, what are you? Oh, don't be modern, because you're quite pretty. I think you are modern, aren't you? I think you're junk. Um, what on earth? Better have a close-up of this. Oh, he seems to have got myself a little lucky charm. Ho, ho, ho. A cheap, tatty lucky charm. Uh, is that a three-leaf clover with a little man with a pointy hat in the middle? I believe it is. Top of the morning to you. Well, is that going to bring me luck? Hmm. We shall see. We shall see. This is a classic 50 50 with these machines. You can't see it really, but get it in the right position. There you go. Ah. Get it in the, oh there, plus 81. Get it in the right position and the numbers go up. But look at that screen, it's just lines everywhere. 
My guess it's Big Iron, but I'm going to dig it. Just for the heck of it. Okay, stop digging, didn't have to go far. Yep. Oh, it's a full one. <laughs> How lovely. It's a full horseshoe. All those spikes and lines, as I said, big iron. Yep, I do love that screen. It's very intuitive. Has got a bit of a personality to it. I'm glad they took the screen off the GM5 Plus SE and put it on a, a lower end, more affordable machine. Because I think that screen is fun. Oh well. Oh, right. In here somewhere. 8085. Which is good numbers. It's hopeful numbers. Optimism reigns. Ah, oh, uh, hello. Oh, blimey. That looks like a planter, doesn't it, everyone? Looks like I was throwing that under there. I wasn't. That's for real. And I know without doing another thing that that's a cartwheel penny. That is only my second ever field found cartwheel penny. Somebody gifted me some. Uh, but that is my first ever. That was a lovely target, lovely signal. Wasn't particularly deep, but clean 80 numbers. Uh, let's get it on close up. It looks a bit battered, it looks a bit worn, but I'm very happy with that. That's a cartwheel, and uh, that's made my day. That's only my second ever cartwheel find in the field. Brilliant. Oh boy, this one's got some schmooze on it. It's a bit crusty. It's definitely a cartwheel. You can make out some of the lettering around the outside just a little bit. We all know what it is from that rim though. But this has got some mankiness. This thing really has been chewed. Ugh. Oh well, it's a cartwheel penny and I'm still pleased. But yeah, it's been proper munched and I'm not sure how much I'll be able to get off of that. Damon, as hard fields go, is this a hard field? It's pretty hard. Isn't it? We can't believe it. I mean, to look at it. I mean, look at it. Lovely, lovely, yum, 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 mud. Yes, just waiting to be plucked with history everywhere. And we are going along and we are getting nothing. Absolutely nothing. Every now and again, a little bit of lead. Um, I've had one cartwheel penny between two of us. We've got one hour left to redeem ourselves. One hour left. Have faith. Have faith. Yes, <laughs> let's have faith. Come on, one last hour. Big push for some history. Oh, I think we better have that one out. Ah. In yonder. God, be a coin clod. No, be a cow tube clod. Ah, damn you. Damn you, you little swine. Second one today. Ugh. Okay, so this was slightly forced, but it was solid 60s. Well, I say solid 60s, there was a few spikes going down towards the iron, but I'm sure it isn't. Uh, but these have been cow tubes in general today. So, fingers crossed. Yep, that's kind of where I thought it was from pointing it. Oh, okay. Underneath that sod. Oh. I'm on her, I'm on her now. Where are you? Ah, oh, I got you, yes! Yes, I think I've correctly ID'd it. Uh, uh, yep, there's the nozzle. Yep, correct ID, 100%. Sorry to say, another Moo tube. Well, Damon's just walked over and we think that the speech, the motivational workout must have done some good. I think he might have a Roman. Let's have a look. Okay, now I'm, I'm almost 100% that's a chunky Roman. There's not a lot on it but there is sort of something in the middle on both sides that's a different colour and I think that might be something that was raised that obviously has become more diseased because it was more prominent look at that it's just but if you look at the overall colour of that metal and you look at the thickness this is just big old chunky Roman coin kind of everything about that says chunky old Roman denarius or was it a Cisterces? yeah Cisterces was the big ones weren't there one of them anyway but I'm convinced with the, the, the patina on that and, and the whole shape of it, I'm absolutely convinced that that's a Roman. But I'd like your comments, please. Please do comment if you agree that's a chunky old worn Roman, something like a Cistercius. That's what I think. 
and hopefully it is, because it'd be nice for Damon to have one. Oh, beautiful signal in the 60s. Got to be another cow tube. We can only hope not. Oh, we're not going to have to wait long to find out anyway. Because it be here. Oh, there it is. That is not a cow tube. Is that old? It's a piece of something. That's a what on earth is that job? I'll get you a close up of that because I haven't got a flipping clue what that is. What on earth do you think that is, folks? Um, that little piece there obviously pushed into something. It's got two dents in the sides and it's got a little top piece. Now, at first I thought a piece of machinery, but actually I think that might be a little bit older than I first gave it credit for. So a little bit of pattern around the top there. Look at that. It's definitely a part of something. It's fallen out of something. It's a party fact. It is definitely a party fact. But I think that's got some age to it. If you think you know what that is, I'd be very, very grateful. If you could tell me. Okay, we're getting near the end of the day now, but I needed to put that one on camera. Look how tiny that is. That is an absolutely tiny, tiny little target. Um, I've dropped it once trying to film it. And it picked that out with a wispy one. No numbers, no lines, but it wasn't on the surface. Just a wimpy, wincy kind of signal. But that's absolutely tiny. So it will find the small stuff. Jolly good. Okay, so at that point it got dark very quick and we shot off home. Everything's caked in mud, so I'm not going to sit here and hold the detector up because I'll get mud all over my chair. But I am going to quickly tell you a few things about it. That was a tough field. Damon had the XP Deus and he struggled as much as I did. Uh, you can't find stuff if it's not there. It doesn't matter what detector you've got. If it ain't in the ground, you can't detect it. And there really wasn't a lot in that field. But nevertheless, I had enough targets in a, to enable me to talk about the machine and show you a few things about it. Now, the tones on the machine are informative on their own. They do fluctuate. You do get a different high tone, kind of blotchy or wide or short and sharp, depending on the target, the orientation, uh, what you've got in the ground. So the, tar the, the, the tones on their own are quite informative. But I do love that screen. Uh, it's fun, but it's not a gimmick. And I hope that what I showed you with the big iron, with the spikes, was enough to indicate what you get. Alongside the VDIs, you get those spikes. A lot of people like the visual aids, and I get that. I respect that. I can I can go either way with detectors, to be honest. Uh, I'm quite happy to go tones only, and I do quite often. But I do enjoy a machine with a screen too. It's just a different way of detecting, and some people like it that way. And if you do like it that way, I think there's a good chance you're going to like that screen with those spikes. It's quite unique, I think, to Golden Mask. I've never seen one like that on any other detector. And yeah, it's it's very good. That's all I can say, really. It's very, very good. Right, I'll put a link in the description to Metal Detectors Online. If you want to know any more about these machines, please do drop them an email, and they'll be only too happy to give you an answer. Right, until the next time, good luck, happy hunting, and I will see you soon.